And welcome back to Daily Wrap. Well, Americans are having trouble saving. Well, just how much trouble? Two recent polls even show more than six in ten Americans have no emergency savings or less than one thousand dollars in their savings account. So, are too many people living today and forgetting about tomorrow? Well, let's bring in Jason Latos. He is a private wealth manager and advisor at UBS and has been managing finances for ultra high net worth individuals and families since 1994. He's also a two-time adult beer pong champion. <laughs> Who knew that? Anyway, uh, Jason. I didn't even know that. <laughs> wow. It was it was on your LinkedIn page. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm glad you do your research. <laughs> so anyway, six in ten Americans don't have any emergency savings. Yeah. Which is remarkable because you see the stock market it keeps going up. It seems like people are making money. Yet for whatever reason, people are saying, you know what? I'm living for today. I could care less about tomorrow. Let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. Well, I I don't know if I classify it exactly in in, in the all everybody in that category. I think that there's a huge swath of America right now that actually actually is having a very hard time affording you know just living off their incomes. We've got things like health. Healthcare costs rising. We've got taxes rising. We have education costs that continue to go up. And you look at middle America, and believe it or not, they're they're basically pinching their pennies. You know, and they don't have a lot left over to save, unfortunately. So, Gail or Nomi is a client. What would you recommend they do to save more money besides, hey, get your finances together? Like, well, what are some very easy things that Americans should do that they're not doing in terms sure. of putting some money? Sure. You know, one of the things that we actually we talk a lot about with our clients is uh, is just getting organized. You know, a lot of a lot of people don't have. You know, really don't keep track of exactly how much they're spending,、um, and that's one of the first and easiest ways to actually go about doing it. Is just hey, listen, you know, what am I putting? What am I spending each month? What do I need to spend? What do I want to spend?、Uh, and anything that's left over, and they actually usually can figure out after doing that and running through that's not actually a fun process,、uh, but they can actually figure out after that. You know, there are small pieces that they can start stocking away、uh, for later. But the issue is that you know. We like to spend in this country. Yep. No, no. You're born after 1980 or so, right?、Mm -hmm. So, how's that going for you as far as being in New York and you're you're working a lot? But do you have a lot left over? Is、Not、it a matter、all. of that you can't save because you simply don't have it? I have like eight roommates.、Mm -hmm. I live in a 800 foot. Apartment in New York, and I'm paying $3,500. That's not that's an, that's an exaggeration, but that's basically the life that I think most millennials who were sold, a,、uh, you know, they, they were they were sold college education will get you a job, and you get out of college, and you're going to be able to pay off your student loan debt with that job. The problem is, is if you are able to get a, a job out of college, even if you graduate college, meaning you can afford college,、mm -hmm. you're not able to. Pay for your apartment. You're not able to pay off those student loans that can can go up to sixteen hundred dollars a month, and have have discretionary income for other purchases like clothing and food and. You know, hanging out at the movies on the weekend, and we're a consumer economy, so I think this is going to affect us for a long time. This is what we call the perfect transition because you、yeah. bring up student loan debt and you bring up college.、Uh, Bernie Sanders has a proposal on the table that says, you know what, college should basically be free for everyone, and Hillary Clinton says, hey, community college at least should be free for everyone. Now. If you're making that free for everyone, a you're you're decentivizing, I guess is a word,、uh, in terms of people performing well in high schools. Because then, well, what do I need a scholarship for? Because I'm going to school for free. But I want to talk about the money aspect of this, Jason. Yeah, what I, is I, this going to cost, and is it even feasible? No, this makes my brain hurt. Actually, <laughs>、um, you know, is seventy it, billion dollars if you actually back in and do the math is actually is not even close. It's probably three to four times that.、Um, and uh, and it, but but the problem is is that you know when you think about you know it's not. Not free, right? Let's think about that for a second. How are you going to pay for that? We're running a six hundred、uh, billion dollar debt every year,、uh, deficit every year, and we've got eighteen trillion dollars of debt that we've taken on. You back into that, it's not seventy billion. It's probably two or three hundred billion on top of that. How do you get to that? What do you have to do? You have to raise taxes. So in essence, what you're going to be doing, everybody's going to be paying for. Is、it. that true? The Democrat at the table? No, they're、it? trying to. I mean, they're trying to basically justify this by raising taxes on the elite one percent to、mm -hmm. pay for, and the hedge funders and closing out over you know the loopholes in the tax code right now to pay for free, like we said, community college, not college. You know, there's also private colleges. We're not saying that all. Americans are going to have access to free education. There are plenty of Americans who are going to still choose to go to private institutions. Now, if you look at the cost-benefit analysis, if you are able to graduate with a degree and a master's degree, you're able to pump that money. The, the, the chances of you getting a job straight out of, of college are much higher if you graduate, and if you graduate with no debt. So you're able to pump that money back into the economy if you're not spending it on your student loan debts. So you really won't have to raise those taxes. This means that people will be off of off of government benefits. They're going to be able. I mean, you have to look at it from that perspective too. Seem like fuzzy numbers to me. Yeah, Gail,、yeah, so? you just、Deficit? dropped off a daughter at college. I did. What's that running you, if you don't mind sharing?、Uh, it's 
close to seventy thousand with um, with seventy thousand for the four years tuition for a year. No. For a year. Yeah, I know. I was being For slightly facetious. <laughs> yes. So that's nearly three hundred thousand dollars. Then, and we're not even right. And I have six children, so multiply that. Times Good six. lord. Yes. Wow. Any yes. recommendations for for Gail as far as you have kids? They're going to go to school, and it's seventy thousand now. What's going to be in two thousand thirty-five? Yes. Save, save, stock away, and invest. That's the best thing you can do right now. That's the only thing you do. Final question, yeah. very quickly. The Fed never raises rates. It just goes on year after year. What's the ramification of that, and will they ever? Yeah, it's going to happen in our lifetime, I promise. <laughs> uh, th 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 there's, it's probably going to be happening, we guess, in December. In December? Yeah. Okay, we'll take that to the bank. Jason Leto, stick around for the next segment. We'll have a little bit more fun. And why do you think Americans are having such a hard time saving for retirement? Go to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments and let us know. Up next, it's happy time, time for yay or nay. This is The Daily Wrap.